Hi guys, welcome to the channel, I'm David. So this is the first two modules of my modular railway and you can see they've got some lighting on them. So in today's video I'm going to be showing you all about how I built these modules. <laughs> Okay, so I thought I'd start this video by talking a little bit about my design philosophy for the lighting of the layout. It's not a topic that many people really talk about. Uh, most people are just happy to leave their room lighting illuminating the layout. Some people will go a bit further and they'll add some extra lighting, maybe some uh, spotlight rails in the ceiling or some LED strips, but I don't think it's a topic that really comes up in conversation too much and it can really, really change how your models look. If you've ever had the chance to build a small diorama, um, whether it be railway related or otherwise, and take it outside into the real daylight, you'll see just what a difference it makes. To have real daylight, just the correct colour, the, the correct sort of uh, ambience, and also just getting that sharper light and causing shadows on your model can make it look so much more realistic. Now this can be very very hard to achieve. It's not possible to get real sunlight on your models a lot of the time. Uh, for one, you're not going to be building your model railway in a garden. And also, if you wanted to fill your layout room with windows or skylights, you might get some really good lighting, but after a few years, I think you'd get a lot of UV damage. So as modelers then, we are therefore left with the options of using LED lights, bulbs, uh, halogen tubes, or those sorts of fittings. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I use LEDs, as these are a really energy efficient way of lighting your layout, uh, and they're really effective when used correctly. Once you've chosen what type of technology you're going to use to light your layout, in my case LEDs, you've then got a couple of choices to make. First off being how you're going to mount them. So as I said, a lot of people will choose to mount them directly to the ceiling, but this is more of a permanent option. In my case, I'm building a portable layout. Uh, probably similar to how you'd build an exhibition layout, although this is just so I can move it from house to house. So this means I'm going to have to build some sort of lighting structure that goes above the layout. The next choice you've got to make is colour. Now there's a few different arguments to be had about what colour is the best match to sunlight, and this will massively vary based on time of year, uh, intensity of the sunlight that day, uh, the time of day even can change the colour and hue of sunlight. But probably one of the most agreed upon ranges is around the 4000 to 5000 Kelvin mark. Now if you're not sure what Kelvin are, this is just a scale that's been used to define different colours, uh, particularly of white light, when it comes to purchasing lighting products. Now one of the best ways to achieve a really good daylight white um, has been to use cool white LEDs mixed with warm white LEDs, and that gives you this really nice mix in the middle that just looks like daylight white, and you'll see this on RM Web really, really effectively if you follow the little model uh, page. And that's been a great inspiration for the lighting in this video. So moving back to this video itself, uh, you'll see me change my mind halfway through. I initially start by putting some 24 volt LEDs that I believe are 5000 Kelvin, so towards the upper end of that lighting scale. I then realised they're actually quite dim and diffused, uh, and I wanted a slightly harsher light, so I've come back and added uh, one of my old lighting units from an older layout, which we'll see in one of my older videos, link in the top corner, um, which includes some warm white LEDs and some cool white LEDs, just to add to the mix. So yeah, let's get into it. Okay then, so this is the basic framework for the lighting rig. Uh, so I just cut up some timber, some 38 by 38 pine, uh, cut it down to size, and then I've glued and screwed it together, remembering to drill pilot holes for the big screws, those are 70mm screws, uh, holding it together and it's nice and solid and it's all square. It's going to be raised up above the layout and there's going to be LEDs on the underside of it facing down. This front edge doesn't have a framework on it at the moment because that's going to be a nice finished piece of pine painted black and, and pinned to the front rather than screwed so it looks nice and that'll be the front edge you'll see above. Now of course to raise it up I need some sort of post in each corner uh, and I've actually got some shelving brackets as well that are going to make it nice and rigid. So ideally these would be relatively flat and I could stack them against each other because I'm going to end up with a few of these to light all the different modules. 
So my idea, instead of having one long piece of timber, is to instead just have a short piece. I can have my shelving bracket up to here, and then I can have the lights on the underside uh, and the nice bit of wood on the front, and it worked really well. But obviously this is nowhere near tall enough to raise the lights up a couple of feet or a foot and a half above the scenery. So that came along with this idea. So this is just a piece of 38 by 38. Then we've got some 40 mil uh, square box section aluminium cut down to size. And I've whittled down the ends of these bits of wood. I'll try and do this with one hand. This should just slot down into there. Okay then, so it's installed the first section. Um, so I ended up making it up, putting those posts on with the shelving brackets. As you can see, there's also a long screw uh, down in through the top. Then it was a right palaver trying to get these attached. So I ended up uh, clamping them into place and testing various things. In the end, the easiest way was just get a screw in each side and then adjust moving that screw uh, until I got it level. Uh, level or level with this baseboard anyway. Uh, so the same height all the way along. The great thing is it is adjustable if I can. It's a tight fit, so you can just squeeze it up and down. Uh, but no, I think that looks good. From the front of the layout then, you can see we've got these three posts ready to hang some LEDs above the layout, and that should light it up quite nicely. Then of course we can add the nice fascia piece along the top here, so we'll have black fascia at the bottom, black fascia at the top, and it should look quite nice. And it's time to have a quick look at some LEDs. This is what I've gone for. I've gone for continuous LEDs. I'll give the exact name on the screen here, but I've seen these before. And they seem to work quite well because there's actually dozens of really small LEDs and then this yellow rubber helps to diffuse it slightly. Uh, I've also gone for 24 volts. This just means I can fit more LEDs on one power supply. Uh, obviously, if you increase the voltage, you decrease the current you have to supply. Uh, so I could use 12 volt LEDs, but then I'd need a huge power supply. Uh, but as it goes, I've bought myself a 24 volt 6 amp power supply. And my idea is this will power, hopefully, uh, a 12 foot section of the layout. So my plan is to have three meter long sections of LED uh, above each baseboard. So each baseboard is probably, uh, well, it's about 1200 millimeters long. So there'll be a gap at either end of the board that doesn't have LEDs. I'm hoping that's fine. If it's not, I can come back uh, and change my plans. Uh, but for now, I'm hoping just a meter of LEDs above a 1200 mil board should be good enough. Now to mount these, uh, again in the past I have just strung sort of LEDs. Uh, on the old layout they were strung between the beams of the ceiling. Uh, on that failed attempt of an exhibition layout I did that uh, I soon dismantled called Cherry Brook, um, I did make a lighting permit. But I've never tried properly mounting the LEDs as intended. So what I've done is I've gone along onto Amazon, spent about another £20 on these aluminium sections. So this is actually an aluminium sort of channel. You sticky back uh, tape the LEDs into place in the channel and then slot in this nice diffusing cover. And handily these come in metre long sections. Okay so you can see I have uh, de-rigged this from the layout and it's time to start mounting the LEDs. I've actually got these small clips pre-installed. Now I've decided, just so I can get these lights evenly spaced uh, across the depth of the layout, to put one of them on top of the bracket, but that shouldn't make a difference. The bracket's still nice and secure. And I've got this little metal clip. Now there's three in a line. I've installed the third one in the middle there, uh, and then the second was just put in uh, originally with that other bracket as well. And that should mean you can get the piece of aluminium strip and then clip it down in and it actually has a nice little groove it sits in. Okay, so as you can see, I've got all three rails in. They're on 100mm spacings uh, in between just so it spreads the light out evenly. Obviously the incline section is probably around here, so these three are over the scenic section. You can see I've also started putting the LEDs in, so these have just got 3M tape on the back. So all you do is stick down the LEDs and then cut at the end where you've got the cut line and the two solder tabs. So to stick it down, all you do, peel off the paper, 
and then just push it into place. Then once you reach the end of a section, you cut across either the copper solder pads there, or in my case, the actual solder joints themselves. Okay then, so to wire it up, I've got some different things here. I've got some XT30 connectors. You'd know about these if you've ever made uh, drones, as you've seen me make in the past. Uh, and also, some speaker cable. So this is actually a uh, dual core 1602, so it should be more than capable of taking the currents across these really small distances. So what I'm really doing is basically zigzagging, connecting the ends together just to make it a one whole strip again. And then where it needs to join to the next board to light up the next board, we'll put an XT30. Then also at the start where I want to connect my power supply, I put an XT30. Okay, so that's the wiring in. So you've got an XT30, you come down here, just cable clips along, and you can see it's soldered to the end of the LED strip. Decided that was a rather precarious connection, uh, so for the rest of them, I've moved to one solder pad in from the end, just so it's a bit more secure. Uh, I can always come along and move this further in if it becomes an issue, but for now I'll just leave it as is. So you can see the power comes in this way, up there, loops down at that end, comes back, loops down at this end, goes off that way, and then I will be adding another XT30 down at that end to connect to the next board. So the final thing to do before we get this installed and tested is to clip in the diffusers. Now all these are is a bit of plastic, frosted plastic, that clips into this tray, part of the same kit that I got on Amazon, and it just clips together uh, and it should make it look like a much neater assembly. The following day Okay, so we're jumping forward, both in terms of this video, the lighting rig, and also I have just started last night painting this back scene for the painting the back scene video. Uh, however, I've come to a dilemma. So the lights that I've just shown you the process of installing, you see them there, are giving a nice soft glow of lighting over the layout, uh, but they're really not bright enough for what I wanted. Um, Comparing to the lighting rig on West Canal sidings, they're just really not bright at all. But again, it's a it's a nice soft daylight glow. So in a panic last night, I searched around and I found a different LED strip. So you can see at the front here, this is a waterproof 24 volt uh, LED strip. And it's a bit brighter. Unfortunately, I seem to have got the wrong color. I definitely ordered... Um, 4000 Kelvin, which should be a lighter sort of daylight white color, uh, actually slightly warmer than the 5000 Kelvins that are at the back there. So I'm going for a nice daylight color, but I did think these ones were a tiny bit blue. What's turned up is actually even bluer. Sat there thinking, and I mean, I've plugged in the West Canal sidings lighting rig and just held it above the layout to go to see what sort of level of brightness that achieved, and it looked really good. So I've just been sat racking my mind about what I can do about it. And I thought, well, why don't I just use the West Canal Sidings lighting rig? My only issue is the West Canal Sidings lighting rig. That's a very uh, long sentence. The lighting rig from my old layout um, is 12 volts, not 24. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some current testing on all of them to see how much current each takes. But then I might be able to use a voltage transformer uh, to step down the voltage going in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start actually putting it all together and I'll show you what it looks like at the end. Okay then, so it's all installed and I think it's looking really good. So the nice bit of pine there finishes it off nicely. We've got a split pin hinge here ready to connect to the next lighting module, uh, which I hope to build this week, but I might not get round to it. Then you can see there, we've got the lighting rig from West Canal Sidings installed there, adding all that extra light. And I think it's looking really, really good. Uh, so we'll see if I get time to build the next one. Uh, and yeah, we'll take it from there. Okay, so as you can see, and as you will have seen in the previous video, I did actually complete that second lighting unit. Now this was mainly so I could see the color matching across the two baseboards and get the scenery to blend in together. In some of the photos I've taken, you can see a before and after. So this is with the lighting unit on, and then if we turn it off, you can see you just really don't get as much detail in the scenery and the colors just don't look as good. If we look at a photo zoomed in there on the viaduct, you can see it really makes a difference to how the painting and weathering just stand out and look really realistic. 
And again, here are just some photos from the layout showing the lighting. Okay, so thank you very, very much for watching. I think the next video is going to be on weathering some rolling stock. I did manage to get four uh, maroon Mark 1s weathered, uh, as well as two plum and custard coaches, and my dapple large prairie has also been weathered. So I hope you look forward to that one. It's gonna be using some airbrushes and powders and various techniques, some dry brushing as well, I think. Uh, and then after that, I've got one more video in the backlog, and hopefully by then, I'm back at my parents and we can keep working on the scenery. <laughs>